Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. Today I've got kind of a different video put together for you guys. Um, I want to talk about magic theory and how it's, for the most part, useless. And I know that's a controversial statement, but uh, I want to explain my thinking and what you can do to, to fix this and make magic theory useful to you. But I want to preface this by saying in no way do I want to come across as preachy or or anything like that. And I'm well aware of the fact that I'm talking about magic theory and how it's useless while I'm making a video about it and expecting you all to watch that video. So I'm well aware of the irony there. But um, I think this is useful for, for those of you starting out in magic or just getting going with magic, I think I can save you a lot of time and even a lot of money. I want to start off by establishing uh, some reality or some framework that we can work off of. And that is the old adage that perception is reality. Now, as we do magic, we have to deal with the fact that the public perception of magic is what magic is it's that's just how it is that's a fact it's a it's an observable fact it's it's an objective truth uh, at the very least there's a public consensus of what magic is and unfortunately it's it's not good magic is often portrayed in a in a bad light uh, so for instance take different examples from television and movies. So uh, if you're familiar with the show The Office and the character Michael Scott, the boss, he likes magic and, and there's different references to him going to magic camp and stuff like that. And Michael Scott, the character, is uh, he's just a cringy person. He's corny and He's likable, but not likable. He's just annoying. And if you watch the show, you know what I mean. So magic is, is put in that light and, and the people that like magic are, are compared to people like Michael Scott. And in another show, Arrested Development, there's a character, Job, and it's kind of the same thing. Magic is shown to be cheesy and, and stupid and uh, sometimes creepy. And none of this helps the public perception. Uh, people almost by default uh, see magic per portrayed this way and uh, by default they, they see magic that way. And it's not helped by the fact that there's bad magicians out there in real life uh, perpetuating <laughs> the the idea that magic is creepy and corny and stupid but I believe magic is an art and I know a lot of you believe it's an art and it's it's a fun hobby and just like most hobbies if you if you really think about most hobbies when you get into uh, the accumulation of things and and all of that most hobbies are nerdy so we are all just nerds but our magic doesn't have to be nerdy or creepy or cringy so like i said i i believe magic is an art but we have to deal with the fact that the public doesn't believe that magic is generally not respected and it's no surprise with the way it's portrayed in television and movies and when people see a bad magician and and they equate magicians to children's parties and clowns now i think a lot of people make the first mistake uh, by consuming too much magic theory uh, in an attempt to give more meaning to the meaningless magic is meaningless for the most part at its core it's about entertainment it's about fun uh, it, can, it can be playful and silly 
which no surprise is probably part of the reason people equate it with children's parties and clowns. So on the flip side of that, I think it's easy for someone to get caught up in the theory, the philosophy, what magic should be or what magic shouldn't be. I think you will progress further and have more enjoyment by focusing on magic as entertainment and, and having fun. Some of my biggest inspirations are magicians like Greg Wilson or David Williamson, David Regal, Jay Sankey, Richard Sanders, uh, Garrett Thomas, for instance. The list is longer, but the, those guys come to mind. Uh, these magicians understand entertainment just as much as what good magic is. And some of these guys, they, their style is more quick and punchy, like Greg Wilson or Jay Sankey. And some of the other guys have a, a different style where it's more artful and, and meaningful. And like David Regal has a lot of routines that are heartfelt and he gets couples involved and, and things like this. You're almost better off as, as you begin this journey to imitate uh, great magicians rather than delving into theory and, and accumulating books or listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos of guys just spout off magic theory and, and the way they think magic should be. Seek out good magic and learn what good magic looks like. And at first, emulate that before trying to understand why exactly it is good magic. And going back to the point I just made with uh, consuming too much of other magicians' opinions through podcasts, through books, through YouTube videos, uh, you will often miss the forest for the trees because all this stuff is very interesting, the theory, the philosophy, and it's, it's easy to consume more and more of this stuff, but it's often hard to apply theory when you have nothing to apply it to. You might get stuck in the mindset that if, if you can understand more and more what something means or why you should do something that you'll actually understand how to do that thing. Which is why I mentioned you're probably better off in the beginning to Im imitate and emulate what good magic is. Uh, later on, you can begin to apply ideas of theory to to further enhance the good magic that you've, you've already learned. Another important point about consuming too much of other magicians' opinions is you, you want to be careful how much you're listening to a magician talk about psychology or neuroscience or behavioral studies or body language, these types of things. Uh, it's often the case they're compensating for something else. And that might be they feel some lack of credibility and they're trying to, to fill in the spaces with these other ideas, which for the most part, they're not qualified to be talking about or teaching other people about. And they probably aren't grasping these concepts themselves. They're, it's an attempt to maybe look smart. Instead, what you should do is seek out experts in these fields. Uh, you wanna learn about psychology, listen to someone who studied psychology, who's dedicated a large part of their life to that subject, or neuroscience, or the behavioral arts, or creativity, or how to practice more effectively. There's a bunch of TED Talks, TEDx Talks, podcasts, YouTube videos, where people are giving this information for free and they're experts on the subject. There's literally TED Talks about being more creative, how to tap into your creativity, how to practice more effectively, 
How practice is working in the brain, the neuroscience of practice. There's, there's literally TED Talks about these subjects. So seek out these experts and then take that information and apply it to your magic. Be very careful how much of this information you're consuming from another magician. The thing about theory, magic theory, is that it's just a theory. It's someone's perspective, someone's opinion about this. The most effective thing you can do for yourself is just work on your own magic. Put in the time and put in the practice. And that leads me to my next point. The solution to all of this, uh, the solution to dealing with the public perception of magic, the solution to elevating magic to an art form, and the solution to applying magic theory effectively to your magic begins with you. So the solution is to identify for yourself and clarify specifically what magic you like, what magic you are drawn to. Because the bright side of all of this, no matter the public perception, we have the opportunity to change that perception. But it begins with developing our confidence and and behind that is the work put in by deciding what we're going to focus on. So what magic are you drawn to? What resonates with you? Focus on that magic, practice that magic and get good at that magic. Then when you perform it for people, it will be the best that it can be. And the advantage that we all have is that most people have no idea that the breadth of magic and most people have never seen magic in person in real life uh, most people have no clue what really good close-up magic can look like so like i said it's about defining the style you like what resonates with you when you do that everything else falls away you f you focus on a subject you're going to save time. You're going to save money by not accumulating uh, other stuff you don't need. And with that focused attention, you're going to become really good. And on top of that, you'll grow and progress more quickly than if you were just consuming magic theory, getting this new card book. Oh, getting this new uh, one off trick that just came out. This is this is unfocused attention and, and unfocused energy. Another benefit to doing that is when you can identify the, the style of magic that you like, you will most likely be a better performer of that style of magic. Instead of trying to do magic you, th you think is good or that is theorized to be good, you may just end up being something that you're not. Instead, just focus on one subject and you may find out that you're not totally in love with that and that's okay. Maybe you spent a month on that and you got enough of it to know it's not the right fit. Well, then just pivot and, and shift your attention to somewhere else. The important thing is to focus and to be able to identify what to do and don't try to do everything. The next layer to this, after you've decided what magic resonates with you, is to get out there and perform it. Obviously practice the routines, but you want to perform as much as possible. And I don't recommend performing for family and friends. They just know you too well. They know your mannerisms, they know the way you speak. And as we perform routines, we often, we put on a little facade, so to speak. And your family and your friends see right through that. Uh, they, they know everything about you. And instead of getting honest feedback or an honest reaction, you're more likely to get uh, hassled or, or heckled. And 
it's gonna only be discouraging for you. If you can, try to make some good friends in magic that will give you critical feedback and be completely honest with you. You need to have a thick skin if you wanna grow. So find those people that will tell you the truth that you need to work on that. You need to work harder. That's not smooth. You flashed, et cetera, et cetera. If all else fails, you can always record yourself and then watch that footage back. But be extremely self-critical when you do that. So it's only after this point that you've, you've worked on yourself You've defined a little bit of an identity for yourself, what, what your magic brand is. And you're getting the, the honest feedback from people. You're performing as much as you can, and you're working on getting good and better reactions. Only then should you start applying any theory at all to your magic. It's like having the foundation built of a house. We see this, we see the perimeter walls, but it's just the foundation. That's the magic that we've decided to do. That's the magic we identify with. That's the magic that resonates with us. Picture the walls that go up on the interior of the home to be the theory, the philosophy, the, the neuroscience, the psychology. It's the walls that now give definition and and are defining which rooms are which and how big one room is to the other uh, we need that foundation first before we can put this theory and these other ideas on top of it so be very careful with how much you're consuming of other people's thoughts and ideas and and if they're even qualified to be speaking on the subject they're attempting to be speaking on. Are they just trying to look smart? Are they feeling some imposter syndrome? Or are they making up for lack of credibility? Most of the time, you're better off at honing your craft rather than listening to someone else's opinion about what the craft means or what the craft should be or what it should look like. You get out there and show people your craft. You work on and adjust the way you're doing your own thing. It's at this point you can develop your own theories about your magic, not what magic should be or shouldn't be. Another thing to keep in mind is the magic industry. The different magic companies, the websites, they rely on and survive because of hobbyists and amateurs, uh, they're businesses. They need to make a profit to survive. They're not necessarily concerned with your growth as a magician or your progress as a magician. Uh, they need to make a profit. They, they want you to buy the new trick of the week. And then they want you to buy the next new trick that comes out next week and then the one after that. So just be critical of what the business's goal is and what your goal is. I'm not saying don't ever buy anything, but is the thing you want going to serve your goal? Is that new book going to teach you something new and useful that you will use for the rest of your life? Or is that new trick or new book just filling some void in you that is really because you haven't sat down and practiced and put the time in to the tricks that you do know. How often have you asked yourself, do I really need that thing when I've got this bookshelf over here full of books? Have I tried everything in those books? You know, will this trick do it for me? Will this new trick uh, somehow make me a better magician? Ask yourself these questions. So if you've stuck with me this long, I want to thank you for listening to my thoughts. And I, I sincerely hope you know, this, this stuff is helpful to you. Uh, 
like I said, this is stuff I think about all the time and, and I really thought it, it could be useful for a lot of you out there. So I read all your, your comments that you send to me and, and people even message me through my website. Uh, my website's rickholcombmagic.com and I really appreciate all the messages from you guys and that's why I've made this channel is to be helpful and to inspire people to do magic, get into magic and to work on their magic. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for being here. Bye.